Hi everyone, welcome to Bonnie Carolee Makes Cards. With Valentine's Day just around the corner, this card features Simon Says Stamps Poppy's background in a fun heart design. The main focus for this card will be on masking techniques. And that is our exact starting point. I'm starting off with a piece of masking paper by Simon Says Stamp, which is A2 size, the same size as my panel. I start off by just lifting up a corner so I can figure out which side has the sticky backing. I want to make sure that I die cut on that side. I then lay out my design so that I can position the heart. The die is held in place with a little bit of low tack purple tape. Without removing the backing from my masking paper background, I simply lay it on top of my Bristol Smooth cardstock panel. The backing paper is removed from the die cut heart. The heart is then positioned in the die cut opening. I'm now ready to start ink blending my background. I'm working with Distress Oxide inks, Candied Apple, Seedless Preserves, and Black Soot. I want my background to be quite saturated in color, so I apply a lot of ink with a good amount of pressure. I start off by inking one half of the panel with the candied apple. The other half is done with seedless preserves. Where the two colors meet, I overlap them and ink back and forth between the colors until I get a nice seamless blend. I wanted the bottom of my panel, which would be the red tone, to appear deeper and richer, so I introduce black soot. I work back and forth between black soot and candied apple until I achieve the blend that I want. I let the background dry completely before I removed the masking paper heart. I then use the negative space masking paper background to cover the ink blended panel. So this was a bit tricky to lay down. If I had given this some thought, I wouldn't have removed the backing paper in its entirety. I should have removed just enough of the backing paper so that I could get my heart lined up at the top and then peeled off the rest. When working with red rubber stamps, I just lay it straight on my glass media mat. It holds well and you don't have to worry about slippage. I choose a section of the stamp that I want my heart to be centered over, a nice big poppy bloom. The corner of the stamp that I'm going to be working with is inked well with Versamark ink. The panel is laid down. I make sure that I rub that top area of the card where the heart opening is very well with my hand. After all, there's no stamping this twice. The masking paper is removed before I apply the embossing powder. I use my craft pick to help me remove any parts that tear as I'm removing it. The stamped image is embossed with Inkon 3's Gold Rush embossing powder. A soft brush is used to remove any stray embossing powder. I'm not too particular about removing everything because I will be spattering the panel. Once the embossing powder is melted, I'm ready to start painting using my Zig markers. I'm working with just four colors. I'm using a mid green for the stems. For the flower petals, I'm using a combination of purple and wine red. And then I finish up with the background painted in black. For each of the flower petals, I apply purple at the base and then add in some red. I use my water brush pen to pull up that color to get some variation and highlights. If you are not a confident painter, Working with these water-based markers on embossed images almost always ends up with a good result. I wanted the background to be very black, no variation, so I did not use my water brush pen. I just colored directly with my black zig marker. I wanted to create a 
gold embossed frame around the heart. I die cut a heart from heavy cardstock. I used a Versa marker to trace around it. This is essentially a pen with Versamark ink in it. The Versamarker comes with two ends, a brush and a bull nose. I made sure that I used the bull nosed end for the tracing. The border around the heart was embossed in gold. I found it easier to emboss one side and then the other. I wanted the embossed outline to have just a bit more sparkle. I re-inked the emboss line and then used Ranger's Holographic Embossing Powder. When it is melted, it is clear, but when the light hits it, it is just gorgeous. I'm ready to spatter. I put my panel inside a spatter box and then protect my image by placing the heart that I use for tracing over top of it. I will be spattering using Distress Spray Stain Tarnished Brass. For a fine spatter, I reach for my smallest watercolor brush. When the panel is dry, I lay out my sentiment so that I can position the frame die that I will be using to die cut the panel. I use this die often. It is included in a set by Simon Says Stamp called Frames. It produces a scalloped frame. I will die cut both the panel and a piece of matte gold cardstock with it. The frame from the panel die cut will be replaced with the gold one. This die is also used to cut some black sheet foam. The foam will be used to provide some dimension for the panel. It is left to dry under the weight of my Misty so that there is good contact between the two. The sentiment, Simon Says Stamps Hey Love, is die cut from both matte gold cardstock and black sheet foam. The foam die cut is left intact, only removing the negative die cuts from the letters. There is a slight impression between the words of the die cut in the foam and its background. This makes it very easy to align the gold sentiment on it. I really like how these two words are positioned with each other. Because the die is solid, I can't use it to help me get that exact positioning. So after the sentiment is stacked, it is still not removed from the foam background. Glue is applied to the sentiment and it is put in place on the panel. The sentiment is held in place with one hand and the foam is removed with the other. The panel is centered on an A2 size top folding card base. The matte gold scalloped frame is positioned around it. The card is embellished with three sequins and topped up with Nouveau Crystal Drops Morning Dew. And that wraps up this Valentine's card featuring Simon Says Stamps Background Poppies. As always, I appreciate your visit.